Wheels. I'm your host, Michelle Martin, and today we find ourselves at Lone Star Citrus Growers with owner and operator Jed Flowers. Now, a couple years ago, we showed you guys his groves and how harvest was done, but today we're going to show people at home how grapefruit and orange juice is made, right? We're sure happy that you showed us today, and we're going to show you how we make such a healthy product. Well, I'm ready because I'm thirsty. Let's go see. Let's go. I learned something when I was working with produce and that a lot of grocery stores will reject produce and citrus if it doesn't look cosmetically pretty. That's right. Is that what all this is? Well, you know, being involved in the fresh produce business, everything is bought by the eye. So the consumer wants to see a perfect fruit, of course, with the quality inside. So we have to aspire to quality standards that are largely cosmetic. So anything that has blemishes, or that's too small for our fresh pack, we bring over here to process for juice. So just though, because it doesn't look pretty on the outside, typically it's perfectly fine in the inside, right? It's all exactly the same. The peeling is just the wrapper. All right, Judd, so we found ourselves now in the control room. And behind me is where the magic starts to happen. And so with the juice plant, there's so many steps. Tell me step one. So the first component behind us is an oil extractor. Okay. Before the fruit has, is squeezed for juice, it goes across a component that removes the oil from the peel. And grapefruit peel oil or orange peel oil is a component in a lot of industrial products that's used for many, many uses. For example, in uh, either paint thinner or hand cleaner or perfume, Grapefruit peel oil is a very valuable and very versatile component in a lot of products. So who knew that a simple grapefruit peel, which, you know, when we're eating grapefruit, we typically just throw away. Who knew that it serves so many purposes? Right. Well, I was telling you that when we first put in the juice plant, I was blessed that the Lord sent me a person to help me get started in this business. And he explained to me in the beginning that if we were in the hog business, he would show us how to get everything from the hog except for the squeal. But in the grapefruit business, he said he was going to show us how to get the squeal as well. Hey, you get it all? Yeah, we get everything. Can't ask for more, right? <laughs> Judd, we have seen what happens after the oil is removed in the extraction room. Explain to me step number two. Okay, after we come out of the oil extractor, we go into this juice extracting room. The extraction is a series of cups, two cups. One holds the fruit, and a second cup on a piston perforates the fruit itself and compresses the juice through a small perforated cylinder, which separates most seeds and pulp from the juice. And then the seeds and the peel drop into a peel screw that goes outside to be used on the ranch or at the feedlot. Meanwhile, the juice travels on to be collected to go into the pasteurizer. Okay, so I have a question for you. When it comes to grapefruit juice, let's say I'm grocery shopping, it seems to all look and taste the same. How is that so? Because I am very familiar with growing citrus, and I know that towards the latter part of the season, the fruit is sweeter. That's right. Well, for a fresh citrus program, our season runs from late September through the middle of May. So there are subtle changes as the fruit ripens from that eight month period. And in order to make the fruit taste and drink the same every day, we sell part of the fruit offline and then we store a good bit of it in sub-zero temperatures and bring it out to blend it to customer specifications during the year. The only thing that I can think about is with all these steps, there's gotta be problems. What are some challenges that you face? Well, the main thing we need to ensure for the people that are going to use the product downstream is shelf life. And in order to establish a satisfactory shelf life for the juice we produce is the control of microbes. 
So we have to maintain a sanitary facility that's combined with cleanliness, sterilization, and we use a heat treatment called pasteurization, the same as you use for milk, which controls the level of microbes in the juice. All right, now we're kind of in the final steps. I feel like I might be wrong, but it looks like a lab. What happens here? This is the lab where we substantiate the shelf life capabilities of the products that we produce. Number one, we have to describe everything we sell in terms of a bricks acid ratio, and we establish what those components are here in the lab. It seems that there would have to be a team that would have to run through this entire facility to make sure that it was completely clean. Is that how it happens? That's exactly what happens. Before we start every day, the lab team goes through every component that touches the fruit and does a swab test and reads those swabs to make sure that there's no microbial contact coming into contact with the juice. Mr. Clean, that's what Mr. I'm going to start Clean. calling him. That's what we do. <laughs> Judd, we just left the juice plant and now we find ourselves here at Monte Cristo Ranch. So your operation kind of carries over into here. Absolutely, it's all tied together. Tell me how. From the juice plant, whatever we don't pack in fresh, of course, goes to the juice plant. And after we extract the juice, about 50% by weight is pulp and peel. And so we take that pulp and peel here and distribute it to the cattle during the wintertime as a supplement to forage. And tell me what kind of health benefits does that have for your cattle? Primarily, it's uh, carbohydrates. There's lots of sugar in the peel, leftover bits of juice, and uh, lots of fiber with the membranes inside the fruit. And then it also has protein that comes from the seeds. Depending on the variety, it could have six or seven percent protein. So you have primarily a cow-calf operation. That's right. Explain that to me, the process, a little bit. The reason we have cow-calf operation is because we have available forage 12 months out of the year with, uh, you know, we live in an area where the longest grazing season in America is right here. We have about a 20 inch rainfall and then all of our ranch is in irrigated section so we can produce some kind of forage 12 months out of the year either with warm season grasses or with cool season medics and clovers and then we supplement that with the hay that we grow in between the baby trees and as you can see with the, the pulp and peel from the juice plant. So since we have availability of that food stuff all year round, we keep mature cows and then we raise the calves. The steers usually go to the feedlot, except for the top 10% of the bulls that we sell to other producers. And then the heifers we maintain for replacements in our own herd or to sell for other producers. Judd, thank you so much for allowing us to come out and see your impressive and extensive operation. We really enjoyed it, so thank you. Well, it was a pleasure to have you come back anytime. Careful what you wish for, but you are a busy man. I am, but just gotta keep going. That's right, and I gotta keep on going, so where will I be next? Only God knows. Maybe I'll come back and take some grapefruit. <laughs> oh, we'll see you guys next time. <laughs>